Boruto Naruto Next Generation. This is chapter 28 titled Flowers, a much more peaceful and almost serene chapter as it were, where we get to see the bond form between both Naruto and Kawaki himself, making Kawaki's eventual betrayal of the Hidden Leaf seem even more preposterous than ever before. <laughs> Up until now, Kawaki has been a little bit wild and a little bit violent, but he's been going along with Naruto and his plans for him much more easily, mostly since Naruto has made it very clear he's more skilled than Kawaki and could outmaneuver him at any turn no matter what. So while it does seem a bit dangerous with what Naruto is trying to do, it's also showing that it's actually kind of working to a certain degree. And with this, they might be able to discover what Kara is truly up to, and possibly even keep a dangerous element out of their hands. As they continue on their walk from before, they stumble upon Sarada, and she ends up, you know, just kind of talking about things with them. And, you know, they start to have a little bit of a snack here, you know, with Kawaki just kind of noting things about, you know, Teyaki and how, you know, it's the... You know, they just had breakfast, it's a little early for lunch. Kawaki is very straight-laced, very serious. He doesn't really like to, he doesn't really know what fun or interesting things is. You know, he's very stinted in terms of being a child and just having a little bit of, you know, downtime. And that shows the contrast between him and Sarada. You know, who, you know, goes out of her way to recommend something and Kawaki chooses something completely different. You know, kind of showing that they don't completely gel. But Kawaki, you know, enjo very much enjoys what he chose. And, you know, Sarada notes that it's just kind of odd that it's just like you've never really, you know, enjoyed anything like that. You know, it's, it's very interesting. So she's trying to form this connection, but Kawaki just keeps biting back, you know, even when she's just like, hey, can I have a taste of yours? And he just kind of, he's just very standoffish about the whole situation. So he never completely lets his guard down, but he's still willing to go along with certain things and try certain things. However, we also still see his more volatile edge when a young boy kind of runs into the back of Kawaki and Kawaki immediately goes on the offensive. And it seems like he's about to kill this young kid if not for the intervention of Naruto himself. But Kawaki plays it off simply saying it's just like, hey, you should be more careful. There's danger lurking in the world everywhere. You know, don't let your guard down. And after, you know, Sarada checks on the young boy and makes sure that he's okay and everything, you know, you know, they both kind of, well, Sarada specifically kind of berates him, saying it's just like, you terrified the kids, you shouldn't be that violent towards younger children and all that. But Kawaki was kind of, wasn't really raised in that kind of environment. He was raised to always be on guard, ready for a fight, ready to take action. You know, in a world of peace, he's kind of an outlier, more or less. But, you know, Naruto just, you know, kind of downplays things. He's not overly harsh towards him. He doesn't berate him, but he does kind of you know, request certain things. It's just like, listen, try to be a little more sociable. You know, try to be a little more peaceful. Understand that, you know, this isn't really the world that you grew up in. There's a little bit more of a peaceful nature out there. And eventually we do come onto the place where, you know, they ended up wanting to go, which is actually, you know, Yamanaka's flower shop, the Yamanaka flower shop, more or less. 
and you know we ultimately figure out what Naruto's actual goal here and that is to get a new vase to replace the one that you know Kawaki broke and we also get this reintroduction to Ino Yamanaka who in this art style still looks like she's 17 which kind of took me off or 15 you know she still looks a uh, pre time skip almost like she hasn't aged at all so uh, you know it kind of throws me off to a l certain degree because she ends up looking the same age as Sarada so the ob artist obviously needs to work a little bit on his style you know making older characters look older and younger characters look younger but I ain't mad at him because she still looks cute as all hell and you know, Naruto's very transparent, wants to buy a vase, you know, flowers, all that good stuff. And he asks Kawaki to pick something out. Kawaki, you know, just kind of brushes it off and picks up the first thing he sees. And Sarada kind of berates him to a certain degree. It's just like, you know, put a little more thought into it, man. <laughs> Naturally, Kawaki snaps back. And, you know, he just like why are you even here you know who do you think you're talking to why do you act like you're better than me you know it's a very interesting relationship between these two you know and it really does show that you know a lot will probably change in the next few years for these characters a deeper bond because you know there's a shell that they're slowly breaking through and even naruto's just kind of like Yo, it has more meaning, it ha only has meaning because you're the one choosing it. You know, if you're actually sorry for what happened to Himawari's vase, you know, put a little more thought into it. Let those feelings take shape and they'll be, you know, it'll be properly conveyed to their someone. But Kawaki ultimately still chooses the same one, saying that, you know, it's a nice design, it's very simple, it's not overly extravagant, and it, it'll do well with the geometry of the room. Now, <coughs> you know, and ultimately, you know, it's just like, alright, cool, you know, give you a discount and all this, and as she's putting in the flowers in, Kawaki has these flashbacks to the pot where the chemicals, you know, that were being pumped into his little prison where... And all these flashbacks to his time with Kara and everything that had gone on and how he easily could have died. And he just has a moment where he just freaks out, you know, showing that he has obvious PTSD. And everyone's just kind of like, are you all right? Are you OK? They don't treat him like a freak. They're just like taken aback by because, you know, he never really has. Nothing has really broken his cool demeanor up until this point. But Naruto thinks back to his thoughts, just like, maybe it would have been better had I died, you know. Maybe it would have been better had I not survived. I've been living in this endless hell and all this stuff. And, you know, Naruto thinks about all of this, and he just gives Kawaki a hug. And it's just like, hey, I'm sorry these things happened to you. You know, it's all right. You're going to be okay. And Kawaki just kind of rolls with it. I had initially expected him to fight against this or fight back towards it. But he doesn't. He takes this embrace in stride. And, you know, it shows that underneath the surface, despite the fact that he has such a hard demeanor, the kid's gone through a lot of shit. He's seen a lot of shit that's just put him on edge in a constant state throughout all of his life and it's going to be hard for him to just kind of move past all of that and even Sarada just kind of realizes there's something deeper going on with this guy you know and as ultimately they leave the flower shop you know it's just like hey you know you know you can come by anytime you know maybe buy some more flowers and you know she she sees them off very nicely, but she also has this kind of look towards her towards the end after Kawaki gives her a bow as a thank you prompted by Naruto. And she just has this melancholy look. It's just like, just 
the level of empathy that everyone is showing towards Kaoki is very touching and very nice. You know, they're not, you know, fearful of him because, you know, Naruto's been through this same kind of thing, this kind of loneliness, this despair. A lot of people they've known, a lot of things that they've been through has shown that it's just like empathy more than anything else can help to heal a lot for a lot of different people who have gone through a lot of different things and showing empathy can ultimately change a person's perspective keeping them from going down a darker path later on in life and as sarada goes on her way as well she also you know, gives Kawaki a little bit of positive reinforcement, saying she wishes to be the next Hokage, and if there's anything ever troubling him, she you should let her know, you know. And as she departs, Kawaki's just kind of like, "What was that about acting all high and mighty?" You know, and Naruto's just like, "You made a friend, isn't that good?" But he still just kind of plays this off with his own harsher demeanor and all that good stuff and as they make their way back home they run into Boruto and you know they show off the new fa vase that they got and Boruto's like you know it's a good way of showing that you're apologizing however you know there's also another way of showing your sincerity yeah and he hands over of all things this tube of super glue and he's just like I'm sure you know how to use it, and he takes off, <laughs> which Kawaki, you know, angrily is just like, what a pain in the ass, you know, showing that despite the fact that Bruto knows that Kawaki's trying, he wants him to try just a little bit harder, you know, a new vase is one thing, but getting back the original will really show just how much you care. And as we see the members of Kara, um, you know, outside the border of the walls, um, Koji goes on about the Yamanaka family, who are sensory ninjas, who in times of war, you know, would be able to sense any shift or any entry of illegal forces into their village. You know, and he goes on to say that, you know, if they were to go in recklessly, you know, they would easily be found out. Um, but he ends up leaving Delta there, you know, entering the village easily without any form of consequence, showing that he does in fact have some odd connection with Kanoha, the village hidden in the leaves, in some way, shape, or manner. He also tells her, it's just like, you wouldn't be able to do this. You'd only make matters worse. Just wait here and I'll be back. And she, you know, Delta's left wondering what exactly is going on with Koji that allows him to just slip into the village so easily. What previous connection does he have with the village hidden in the leaves? And Koji begins his infiltration ready to get Kawaki back. So this was a nice little chapter that just showed the level of sympathy that Naruto has. You know, it shows that he has actually grown into a very understanding person, despite his, you know, friction between him and his son. You know, just because he's a workaholic doesn't actually mean that he's a bad father. And he's slowly becoming the father that Kawaki had always needed, but never had. Which again just kind of plays up the fact that everything just kind of goes wrong later down the line. You know, it really does make you wonder what changed in Kawaki that led to the events we saw in the beginning of the series, the flash forward as it were. You know, what changes in Kawaki that would make him to completely destroy the Hidden Leaf Village? It's like the Sword of Damocles hanging over the heads of our characters. What ultimately leads to the fall of the Hidden Leaf? Because it's obvious that Naruto and Boruto and all of the members of the Hidden Leaf Village are slowly getting through to Kawaki. So something deep-rooted, deep-seated has to change. 
in order for things to go so wrong. But hey, tell me your thoughts on this chapter in the comment section below. What do you think about the growing relationship between Naruto and Kawaki? Naru Kawaki and Boruto, Kawaki and Sarada. You know, how do you feel about all of that? Do you think ultimately it's Koji himself who ends up being the major antagonist, despite the fact that Kara as a whole is the major antagonist of this series? And how far flung do you think this will all go? Because, you know, there's a lot of time before we can get an actual time skip, so we'll just have to see what happens up until that point. You know, you know, again, leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you liked what I had to say here, leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike and tell me what I've been doing wrong. And subscribe for more chapters of Boruto. Thanks for joining me.